the final winners. Yes, later in this program, we'll bring you the names of the last week's winners in the Big Jingle Contest. So stay tuned while new post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. But Mrs. Gray, you're asking me to interfere in a family squabble. I'm asking you to prevent a crime, Mr. Carter. This girl is deceiving my father-in-law in order to get his money. But he's old enough to take care of himself. Then you refuse to help me, Mr. Carter? I'm sorry, but I do. Very well. If you won't do anything to stop them, I will. And now, the case of the fatal redhead. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter. Brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. Dolores Dawn. Billed as the most beautiful redhead in show business, has just returned to her apartment after a talk with Mrs. Howard Gray, Jr., daughter of an elderly millionaire, and she's reporting their conversation to one of her friends. You know what she did, Larry? What? She offered me $50,000 if I'd please not marry her dear father-in-law. Well, you took it, didn't you? Are you kidding? I laughed in her face. Oh, but, uh, but you're not going to marry him, Dolores. You can't. Who can't? Well, the old fool's just waiting for me to set the day. But you love me. You know you do. Look, Larry, like I said, you and me are finished, through, washed up. Now, will you get that through your head once and for all? Oh, honey, please, you don't mean that. You think I'd pass up ten million bucks for a two-bit trumpet player like you? Brother, what an ego. Dolores, I'm not going to let you marry him. Yeah? And how are you going to stop him? I don't know, but you're not going to marry him, and that's final. Mr. Carter, this is an emergency. That's why I asked you to meet me here at the 60 Club as soon as possible. And I'm glad you did, though. I haven't been to a nightclub in months, and this looks like an interesting place, too. It is, Patsy. In fact, I understand they also have a garden in back where people are served in the summertime. Oh, well, that's a swell idea. Well, Mrs. Gray, what's the emergency? It's my father-in-law, Howard Gray. He intends to marry a girl who dances here. Oh? Dolores Dawn, she calls herself. You mean the one with that gorgeous red hair? Oh, I've heard about her. Yes. Father Gray has lost his head completely. Why, he's even made a new will, leaving her a million dollars in case anything should happen to him before the marriage. Well, after all, it's his money, you know. Believe me, Mr. Carter, I wouldn't object if it were someone near his own age. But this girl is young enough to be his granddaughter. She's nothing but a cheap, vulgar little gold digger. Well, even if you're right, I, I, I still don't see what I can do about you've it. You've got to stop them. I have? Well, how? Well, I don't care how. But you've got to do something and do it quickly. I'm afraid they're planning to go somewhere and be married tonight. Well, did Mr. Gray say so? No, but I talked with this Dolores Dawn this afternoon. I lost my temper and we quarreled. Then right after dinner, Father Gray got a special delivery letter. From her? It must have been. Because when he read it, he got upset. He muttered something about coming here to the nightclub and rushed out of the house. I asked him what was wrong, but he wouldn't even speak to me. Oh, Mrs. Gray, your father-in-law came in 15 or 20 minutes ago. He went back to Miss Dawn's dressing room. 15 or 20 minutes ago? I told you to let me know immediately if he came in. Well, I couldn't get away any sooner. My second trumpet man seems to be drowning in sorrows and drink tonight. He keeps wandering away from the bandstand. Oh, very well. Miss Bowen, Mr. Carter, this is Mark Brennan. He owns the club. Hello, Mr. Brennan. How do you do? For the last time, Mr. Carter, will you help me? Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Gray, but your father-in-law is old enough to take care of himself. Very well. If you won't do anything to stop them, I will. Good night. Kind of blew her top, didn't she? Oh, she's just upset, that's all. Uh-oh. You'll have to excuse me, I'm afraid. I see that trumpet player's gone again. Now, go round him up, by all means. You want to stick around for the floor show? It'll be on in about ten minutes. Oh, can we, Nick? Why not? As long as we're here, I'd like to see what this Dolores Dawn looks like. Please. 
Our feature attraction, the most beautiful redhead in show business. Presenting the glamorous, the lovely, the enticing, Dolores Dawn. Drapes down the impossible to see him in this light. Uh huh. Funny, be waving at us. Yes, you'd think he'd be busy. <laughs> Nick, weren't those shots? They were, Patsy. It sounded as though they came from backstage. I think they better have a look. I've already looked in the back dressing room, Mr. Carter. There's nothing wrong back there. Well, how about this door, Baron? It's locked. Well, there's nobody in there. That's my office. Well, here's another locked door. Well, that's Dolores' dressing room. Mark, Mark, what's going on? All that shooting broke up the show. Well, we're trying to find out, Dolores. Open up your dressing room, will you? Well, the shots couldn't have come from my dressing room. Why not? Because Mr. Gray's in there. Besides, the door isn't locked. You're wrong, Miss Joan. It is. It is? Well, that, that's funny. Unlock it, will you, please? Howard will let us in. Howard, open up. It's me, Dolores. Better unlock it. You, you don't think anything's happened to him, do you? I hope not. Unlock the door and we'll see. All right. There's a key in the lock now on, on the inside. Here, give me your key. I'll knock the other one out. Yeah, that does it. Now. Nick, look! That Mr. Gray? Yeah. Yeah, that's him. He's, he's dead. <laughs> Yes, you're right about that, Miss Doan. Oh, Howard. Howard, darling. Been shot three times. <laughs> probably with his revolver on the floor beside him. Why, why, that's my gun. It was in the drawer of my dressing table. Hmm. Evidently, the murderer was smart enough not to leave any fingerprints. This gun looks as though it's been wiped clean. Well, Mr. Carter, shouldn't I call the police? Oh, yes, Brennan. Get homicide. Ask for Sergeant Matheson. Tell him I'm here. Right. I'll call next door for my office. <laughs> Only a few minutes ago, we were talking about getting married. Nick. And now... hmm? Nick, do you suppose this black silk handkerchief could mean anything? Where'd you get it, Patsy? It's lying over by the door to the corridor. Smell it. Smells of machine oil. Mm -hmm. that... That's Larry Michael's handkerchief. What? He uses it to polish his trumpet. What? I've seen him do it a thousand times. Come on. Help! Help! That's Mr. Brennan's voice. Come on, Patsy, look out. Let me get through. Okay. That noise is coming from Mr. Brennan's office. Yeah, the door's locked again. Golly. Watch it, Patsy. I'll have to break it in. Yeah. Mr. Brennan, what happened? He was hiding in here. He, he slugged me. Who did? He's, he's there behind the desk. I didn't mean to shoot him, but he had a gun. We were fighting for it. Who is he, Brennan? Well, he, he used to be Dolores' boyfriend. His name's Larry. Larry Michaels. Within the space of a few minutes, two men have died violently backstage at Mark Brennan's 60 Club. And both of them were in love with beautiful red-haired Dolores Dawn. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now, back to the case of the fatal redhead. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. Sergeant Matheson of the Homicide Squad is in the manager's office of Mark Brennan's 60 Club, questioning Mark and Dolores Dawn as Nick Carter and Patsy listen. Uh, you say this Larry Michaels threatened you only this afternoon, Miss Dawn? Yes. Yes, he, he, he was in love with me. Yeah. He said he'd keep me from marrying Mr. Gray no matter what he had to do. Larry'd been drinking all evening, Sergeant. I, I had to take him off the bandstand just before the floor show, and I. Uh-huh. Well, it looks like he came back to Miss Dawn's dressing room, found Gray there, grabbed this little twenty-two of hers out of the dressing table drawer. Oh, you knew I kept it there, Sergeant. Uh -huh. He even asked me about it once. Okay, so he shot Gray, wiped the fingerprints off the gun with this black silk handkerchief he dropped near the door. Then he heard someone coming and ducked in here to Mr. Brennan's office. Now, just a minute, Matty. Huh? What is it, Nick? The door to this office was locked. He couldn't just duck in. That's right, Sergeant. The door has a spring lock. You shut the door, it locks automatically. Oh. Well, 
Oh, wait a minute. Huh? Look, Sergeant. What? This door isn't locked. Hey, where does that go, Brennan? Outside? Yes, it leads into the garden. Uh Uh-huh. And I saw a door like it in Miss Dawn's dressing room, too. Okay, so Michael's got in here through the garden. Uh Uh-huh, and then Mr. Brennan came in and caught him, and there was a fight. Yeah, and this Larry guy gets killed. Well, (laughs) does that sound logical to you, Nick? The only explanation we have so far, Matty. Now, hey, wait a minute. If he killed Gray with Miss Dawn's revolver, where did he get the one he attacked Brennan with? Well, that gun belongs to me, Sergeant. I I suppose he found it in the drawer of my desk. Well, this sure is a convenient place for a killer. Just pull open a drawer any place you happen to be, and there's a loaded gun for you. Can I go now, Sergeant? It's almost time for the second show. Yeah, you and Mr. Brennan are both excused for now, but you'll have to appear at the inquest, of course. We'll be there, Sergeant. Yes, we'll be there. All right. Well, come on, Nick. Let's get back to town. (laughs) This is one case we washed up in a hurry. Headquarters, Officer Brian speaking. Hello, Brian. This is Sergeant Matheson. I'm on my way down to the morgue in Nick Carter's car. Yes, Sergeant. Now, I want you to have a lab man meet me at the morgue with equipment for a paraffin test. Okay, anything else? No, that's all, but tell him to hurry. Right. Well, the lab man will be waiting for us, Nick, but I'll be doggone if I know why you want him. Because I think that Larry Michaels didn't kill Howard Gray, and I want a chance to prove it. Yeah, but what makes you think he didn't, Nick? Well, that handkerchief you found, Patsy. Huh? I figure it was planted in Dolores Dawn's dressing room. And I can't see any, see any reason why anyone plant evidence on a guilty man. What do you mean the handkerchief was planted? How do you know? Because when a musician has a cloth which he uses to polish his instrument, he usually keeps that cloth in the instrument case, not in his pocket. Oh, that don't mean a thing, Nick. Maybe this time he did have it in his pocket. Uh, maybe. Well, a paraffin test of Michael's hands will prove whether he fired a gun recently. Yeah, well, that's true. Oh, okay, all... then. Let's wait and see what the test shows. Ah, Nick, you're right. We tested both of Michael's hands, and it's a cinch he didn't fire any gun tonight. Then he couldn't have shot Gray. Right. But if he didn't, why did he hide out in Brennan's office? Yes, and why did he attack Brennan when he was caught there? Uh, Hey. Huh? I got an idea. Well, what is it? This Larry Michaels was jealous of Dolores, wasn't he? So she said. Well, maybe he thought Brennan was making a play for her, see? So he... No, did... no, 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 no. Huh? No, I doubt that, Maddie. I talked to the other performers, and they all said that Brennan never showed the slightest interest in Dolores. Oh, you did, huh? Well, I guess that eliminates any motive Brennan might have had for killing Gray, too. Oh, he couldn't have killed Gray anyway. He was in the performer's entrance when the shot was fired. Nick and I both saw him. But Dolores was doing her act when you heard the shots, wasn't she? Yeah, that's right, Matty. Oh, okay. So Dolores didn't kill him, Brennan didn't kill him, and Michaels didn't. But somebody did, and I want to know who it was. Nick, what about Mrs. Gray? Mrs. Who's she, the old man's wife? No, his daughter-in-law. Oh. And she told Nick that if he wouldn't do anything to keep Mr. Gray from marrying Dolores, she would. Hey, wait a minute. Where did all this happen? At the club. Mrs. Gray left us about oh, ten minutes before the floor show went on. And was she mad? Patsy, I'll bet she did it. Well, it won't do any harm to find out whether she did or not. You're darn tootin' it won't. And the garden door opens in as well as out. Right. We better take the paraffin test equipment with us, Matty. Oh, now, don't tell me you think she's innocent, too, Nick. Well, I just mean that if we're going to call on Mrs. Howard Gray, Jr., we ought to give her the same test we gave Larry Michaels. That's only fair. How dare you accuse me of such a thing? Now, look, I didn't say you killed him, Mrs. Gray. I simply said you had a reason to. But that's ridiculous. Okay, okay, but you knew Mr. Gray was in Dolores' dressing room, and after you left Nick and Patsy, you could have gone outside and gotten in there through the garden door. Perhaps I could have, but I didn't. Well, after we make this paraffin test, we'll know whether you did or not. A paraffin test? What's that? What's a paraffin test, she asked? Uh, It's like this, Mrs. Gray. After a person's fired a revolver, there are always a few invisible powder specks left between the thumb and the forefinger. Yeah, so we coat that patch of skin with melted paraffin, let it harden, and when we peel it off, the powder comes with it. Then, by spraying the paraffin with a nitrate solution, the powder shows up as little blue specks. Yeah. 
Okay, Mrs. Gray. Hold out your hand. Now, please. just a minute, officer. Am I under arrest? Uh, well, uh, no. Then but I it... refuse to submit to any such humiliation. I won't be treated like a criminal. Oh. Mrs. Gray, you want us to find the person who killed your father-in-law, don't you? Yes, of course I do. Then you should be anxious to help us eliminate every innocent person, including yourself. Well, yes, You see, but this I... isn't a test to prove that you're guilty. Firing a gun isn't evidence of murder. It's a test to show that you're innocent. I'm sure that you can't object to that. Well, no. Thanks, Mrs. Gray. All right, Maddie, go ahead. I'm sure Mrs. Gray will let you give her the test now. Well, Nick, the paraffin doesn't show a thing. Of course it doesn't. Well, that lets Mrs. Gray out. Yeah, I guess... Hey, maybe you were wearing gloves. But I wasn't. I left the house in such a hurry, I didn't even take any gloves with me. And she wasn't wearing gloves when she was with us, Sergeant. It was that girl, I tell you. She killed Father Gray to get the money he left her in his will. Oh, that don't make sense. She'd have got a lot more dough by marrying him. But that's just it. He wasn't going to marry her. What's that? Huh? He went to the club tonight to break off the engagement. What makes you think so? Because I found that special delivery letter he was so upset about. What? You, you did? Yes. When I came back from the club, I went into the library, and there it was, crumpled up on the floor where he must have thrown it. Here, you can read it for yourself. Thanks. Well, I'll be darned. It's signed by Larry Michaels. And this must be what he was planning when he threatened to stop the marriage. Ah, sort of looks that way, Maddie. You see, I was right about her. She's a criminal, a common blackmailer. What's it say, Nick? According to this letter, Dolores was convicted of blackmail a couple of years ago. Got off with a suspended sentence. Hmm. Father Gray would never have married a woman like that. He must have broken the engagement after he read this. Yes, but Dolores couldn't have killed Mr. Gray. She was doing her dance when he was shot. Are you sure of that? Huh? What do you mean, Nick? I mean, I'm beginning to see what happened, Miley. Huh? And if I'm right, I'll call you at headquarters in about an hour. Okay, Patsy. Where, where are we going? Back to the Club 60. The last floor show must be just about over, and I have a hunch it'll be the last one for a long, long time. <laughs> standing when we heard the shots, Patsy? Yes, he was leaning against those plush drapes. And we've got the answer. Look. What? The drapes are scorched. And those holes are bullet holes. Brennan fired those shots himself while we were looking straight at him. You mean while he was waving to us with one hand? The other hand was holding a gun behind these drapes, probably with the drapes wound around it in order to muffle the sound and make it seem farther away. Huh. Look, he shot into the floor. You see the bullet holes? Sure, but, but why did he do it? Dolores must be still in her dressing room. Let's ask her the answer to that one. I was out there on the dance floor when Howard was killed, and you know it. You heard the shots. Everybody did. The shots we heard were fired by Mark Brennan, Dolores. You're crazy. Why would Mark be shooting off a gun during my dance? For a very good reason. To cover up the fact that Howard Gray was dead when the floor show started. Oh, And to make it look as though both you and Brennan were in full sight of a lot of people when the murder was committed. It was Larry Michaels who killed Howard. No, it wasn't. You killed Mr. Gray yourself. Then you and Brennan framed Michaels, and Brennan murdered him. That fight in Brennan's office was a fake. You can't prove that. Oh, yes, I can. Brennan said that he took his gun away from Michaels, that Michaels got it out of the desk drawer. But I'm going to prove that Brennan had that gun in his pocket all the time. Oh. By digging out those bullets, he fired into the floor during your act. <gasps> I have an idea. A ballistics test will show they came from the same gun that killed Larry Michaels. Well, I, I don't know anything about that. But you haven't got anything on me. We'll see what a jury thinks about that when they learn that Howard Gray had reason to break off your engagement and cut you out of a million-dollar inheritance. No, Carter, what? I don't think any jury is going to hear about that. Brennan! Sure, I've been outside the door all the time listening. Mark, Mark, you got to do something. Don't worry, baby, I'm going to do plenty. Just keep your hands in plain sight, Carter. I'd hate to do any more shooting around here tonight. <laughs> Might give the club a bad name. All right, Brennan, what's on your mind? Well, it's a nice night. Suppose we all take a little ride. All four of us. I, um, thought you said Dolores was coming with us, Mr. Brennan. She's following with my car. I thought it'd be cozier if I rode along with you folks. Turn right at the next crossroad, Carter. You're the boss, Brennan. This gun in my hand's the boss. The next crossroad... 
That's State Highway 84, isn't it? Yeah. There's a little summer resort out that way I want you to see. Ah, a summer resort? Sure. With a nice, deep lake. Camp Carefree, they call it. It's nice and lonely. This ought to be a swell night for a swim. A uh, swim? Oh, didn't I tell you? <laughs> you two are going to set a new record for staying underwater. As Nick drives his car along the lonely road, every turn of the wheels brings him and Patsy nearer to the deserted resort where Mark intends to carry out his threat of murder. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now for the conclusion of the case of the fatal redhead. Today's adventure with Nick Carter brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. At the point of a gun, Mark Brennan has forced Nick to drive to a deserted summer resort while Dolores Dawn follows in Mark's car. Well, here we are, Brennan. I guess this is Camp Carefree. Oh, it, it's so deserted out here. Yeah, isn't it? I couldn't have picked a better spot for a murder myself. Yeah, that must be Dolores. You want us to get out, too? No, I'm going to leave you here in the car. And run it off the end of the pier. Oh, no, that you... That lake's 40 feet deep here, sweetheart. Everything oh. all right, Mark? Everything's fine. Hey, look, Brennan. What's on your mind, Carter? Oh, I was just thinking. It wasn't hard to figure out that Dolores shot Howard Gray. Oh, it wasn't, eh? No, no, it wasn't. He was going to break off your engagement and cut you out of his will. But I still can't dope out how you got into this, Brennan. Oh, that was simple. I was in my office and I heard shots in Dolores' dressing room. So I walked in there just in time to see the little lady with a gun in her hand. And you covered for it? Why not? I didn't want to see her lose that million bucks she was going to inherit. Sure, you covered for me. For 50%. Oh, so that's it. And what did you do after that, Brennan? Well, we locked the door leading into the corridor and then went back into the club by way of the garden. And framed Larry Michaels by planting his handkerchief in Dolores' dressing room. That's huh? right. We had to have a fall guy, didn't we? All I had to do was yank Larry off the bandstand, knock him on the head, and leave him in my office. And then when you went in to phone the police, you pretended he attacked you and you killed him. <laughs> Neat, wasn't it? For the oh. love of Pete, Mark, will you quit this yapping and get it over with? Well, you heard what the lady said, folks. Any last words? Yeah. There's just one thing I want to say, Brennan. Go ahead. If you're here, Maddie, come on out. Hey, what the... Stop that gun, Brennan. Get your hands in the air. Mark, it's the cops. That's right. Start of a reception committee, Brennan. But, uh, where do they come from? We took a shortcut. It saves time. Uh, I don't get it. You couldn't have known where we were headed for it. Nobody knew. Why, you told them yourself, Brennan. I told them. Sure. There's a two-way radio in Nick's car, and it's been turned on ever since we left the club. And Maddie's had a man standing by at headquarters ever since I left him. A radio. You dumbbell. Letting him get away with a stunt like that? All the time you were giving me directions on how to get here. You are broadcasting direct to police headquarters. Nick, what made you think of looking for bullet holes in those plush drapes at the club? Well, Patsy, I was already suspicious of Brennan because it looked as though he framed that fight in which Larry Michaels was killed. Uh-huh. And after Mrs. Gray showed us that letter, it was pretty clear that Dolores had a strong motive for killing Gray. Yeah, but they both had such perfect alibis. I know, but when I began thinking back, mm -hmm. I realized that even though we heard shots during Dolores' act, we had no way of knowing that those were the shots that killed Gray. <laughs> well, I thought it was funny that Brennan should be waving at us during the floor show when he'd only just met us. Yes, I thought so, too. Until it hit me that he probably wanted us to see him at that particular moment so we could establish an alibi. Well, I'm glad it's over anyway. And, Nick, the next time you want to take me out... Yes, Patsy? What do you say we go to a movie, huh? Hmm? Nightclubs can be just a little bit too exciting. <laughs> And now, the winners of the four 1948 Super Deluxe Ford V8 four-door sedans in the final new post-war old Dutch cleanser jingle contest, which closed March 27th. Well, Mike, this is the day a lot of people have been waiting for. It sure is, Nick. And you know, I wish I could give a Ford to everybody who entered. Oh, come, Nick. They don't make that many Fords. <laughs> so what do you say you present those one in the last week's contest? Okay, and without any further ado, here they are. 
brand new 1948 Fords go to the following people. Mrs. C.P. Burnham, 1816 Albert Street, Jacksonville 6, Florida. Mrs. Marvin Capel, 1207 North Trenton, Ruston, Louisiana. William H. Mountain, 1410 South Street, Toledo 9, Ohio. And Mrs. Johnny Wollar, 3644 South Elmwood Avenue, Berwyn, Illinois. Congratulations, you lucky people, and congratulations to all the other winners in this great contest. Nick Carter, Master Detective, presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company, is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Ed Latimer plays Matty. Today's script was written by Jim Parsons. Original music is played by Henry Silvern. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. This is Michael Fitzmaurice saying, when minutes count, use new post-war old Dutch cleansers. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.